I told you there is a time I used to pray and say, Holy Spirit, why don't you just make me do what you want me to do? And many times we say, I want to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. He cannot possess you. It is not theologically right. So you think that since demons can possess people, the Holy Spirit can possess people, he can't possess people. That is why we yield and surrender to him. He doesn't just come and take over. He takes as much as we offer to him. Praise the Lord. Yes, I used to think he can possess me. I, and I used to tell him, I know you want me to have my free will, but in my free will, I surrender to you. I, I surrender it to you. Take it. It is me telling you, God, I know what I want. Make me just do what you want me to do. I'm telling you, it was a struggle. I didn't manage to ever do. Uh, and I used to wonder, why don't you just control me? No, he doesn't. He doesn't control us. We are the ones that yield to him every day. And that is why it's easy for a Christian to be in rebellion. Because you'd think that if somebody is born again, they are automatically going to live a certain kind of life. But it takes surrendering, surrendering, giving up all and giving him room. So you can imagine, I like how Bill Johnson explains this in the hosting God's presence. But he says, think about Jesus. Think about the Holy Spirit like him coming in the form of a dove and resting on the shoulder of Jesus. How do you think Jesus had to walk with a dove on his shoulder? Every step you take, you have the, shoulder, the, the, the dove in mind. You're very careful every step that you take. And as children of God, we need to be very sensitive to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. Very sensitive. Especially if we are to experience the move of God, because let me say like a church, we know our systems, we know how to run our services, we know how to run, to run things, we know how to be excellent. This is what we must do at this time and this time and this time. And sometimes those things hinder us from having the move of God. That we should be so sensitive that we know when it is time to shut up, when it is time to raise our hands, when it is time to kneel, when it is time because... He is as gentle as a dove. So many people come and they're like, Pastor, why don't I feel anything when I worship? But if you look at the way they were worshiping, even if I were the Holy Spirit, they are not the ones I would go to. You get what I mean? As in, my move would not be in them. So, total surrender is so that the more surrendered you are, the more of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Hallelujah. And we will see, we will see like water. Water will flow to the wickest point, the point of least resistance is the one that water will always choose. Yeah? And we will see how the dove is also, I mean the Holy Spirit is also symbolized using water. And the place of least resistance is the place where he will easily flow. It is the place that he will choose first. Yeah? innocent and gentle and like I have said pure so pure uh, yeah actually number two is water John 7 38 39 so when he says anyone who is thirsty come and drink then he says um, out of your belly out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water rivers of living water out of his belly let's read that in NLT but out of his Rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Let's read and amplify it. He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. But the Holy Ghost is not in you as a lake, he's in you as a river continuously flowing and John says this in verse 39 that this he spoke but this spake he of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified so you see he spoke this he said rivers of living water he was speaking about that water how it shall bubble out, it shall flow out, it shall gush out. Actually, 
uh, the, the interpretations that say that gush out of your innermost being. And that is what we see with the disciples later. And that is why when you're born again, you believe on him, the Holy Spirit comes and makes residence in you. But when the, you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, like I was speaking about baptisms the other day, now he flows out of you. He gushes out of you. That is why you start speaking in tongues. You start prophesying. He, he becomes manifest. There is evidence. Just like there needed to be evidence for John to know who Jesus was, that the Holy Ghost had to come upon him. When he comes upon you, there will be manifestation. There will be something that will just flow out of you. There will be a river that will gush out of you. And why should the river flow out of you? So that others can drink. So that others can receive. And that is why we say we are in the move of God. And God is calling you to bring revival. How do you bring revival? By allowing rivers to flow out of you. So that other people can drink from those rivers. You come and receive. And this is what we see about the early church. This is how the move of God. On the day of Pentecost, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And we see wherever they went, they asked, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Why? Because they knew that rivers of living waters flow out of them. And they laid hands on them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And that place was changed. People babbled on. People were not dry anymore. He was not in them like a lake. Hallelujah. So he uses water. He uses water to signify the Holy Spirit. And we'll see. Why does he use water? Yeah. What are some of the properties of water that we would see? Water is refreshing. Yeah. When John is preaching, Peter is preaching to this way in Acts, he tells them these are the times of refreshing. The world is tired. The world is hungry. Believers are grumpy. Believers are whining. Everyone has something to complain about. People are tired of going to church. People now want online. Now even online they are tired. We really need a refreshing. We need people to be lively again. We need to, people to, to see that enthusiasm for the things of God. And we know water is refreshing. Just like the Bible says that uh, that uh, Water, like water is to a thirsty soul, so it's good news from a far land. Why is water good for a thirsty soul? It is because it refreshes. You've been walking, especially during this time under the hot sun, you've been walking all the time, then you get a bottle of water, uh, preferably cold water. Man, you feel refreshed. You feel like you're alive again. Hallelujah. And uh, you realize that if we have a church, we have a ministry, where we are deprived of the move of the Holy Spirit and manifestation of the Holy Spirit, that we try so much to keep people alive as Christians. We will give them a lot of coffee so that they are caffeinated very well to be alive. We will promise them many things. We will say we are doing COVID vaccine in church. We will say we are doing COVID test in church. We will say we are giving free sanitizers. We will do many things to just get people to be because people will easily be bored. Why do you think that we have services where we have a service, our service can go up to three hours, and to some people that is long. We can have a preaching of, a, a preaching of two hours, a preaching of three hours. We go for camp and we are there for three days and camp is not team building. Our camp is not, we don't go there to play games. We go to pray and listen to the word. Why are people lively up to the last day? Because the Holy Spirit is refreshing. He has the property of refreshing. When he feels, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, before I was filled with the Holy Ghost, I used to feel like someone's alone. I used to sit in church. When I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I would sit on the edge of the seat and I would wonder why others are dozing. I realize I'm actually refreshed. You get what I mean? And that is what happens. You, you come from a journey, you're in a matatu, you're somewhere, you're dozing, you're grumpy, you're what? you get home, you take a cold bath, you drink water, all of a sudden, you're just lighter. You're different. You're alive. You can go on. Hallelujah. This our church has no, it has no showers. But the next venue we are getting, we need, we need showers. Praise the Lord. Yeah, like I feel like after the, the first service, it's, that lunch break is very good. You go take a shower. You come back feeling very alive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Yeah, some people come from work quickly when we have a kesha. They come from work, they've been at work the whole day, then run into the kesha. Very good, you reach church and you take a bath. Anyway, that's if you want. There are people who may not agree with me. <laughs> there are people who may not agree with me on that. <laughs> and it's okay, Atuna Ubaya, we will. <laughs> George does not agree. <laughs> Judge, people around you are saying you don't agree. <laughs> huh? How many would like to take an ice bath? Yeah, just a few of us. Yeah, let me tell you, an ice bath is way better than any coffee, you know, and energy drink. Just one dip, just do one minute. Yeah, you come out. I'm telling you, you're going to be sharper than any person that you know. You're going to just be. Very alive. Ice is water still. Yeah. You should you should start you should start doing that. You should start. I don't know if there are ice baths here in Nairobi. But if there is a place you could get that deep, you just you can buy this and put in your home. Just make many ice cubes and put in, then you go deep yourself in and come out. In the you will never need caffeine. You have tasks in that day. Go do that and you will you can but you can start by just using a shower. You get it? Wake up in the morning when it's cold. You, you've just slept for four hours. You have a busy day. Take a cold bath. Don't go for a warm bath. Hey. Everyone will be wondering what you own that day. Okay, I'm giving you secrets. Some of you are not lawyer. I can see it on your faces. But it's fine. It's our too. Mm-hmm. Hot water keeps melting you. You want to melt? (laughs) Yeah, so water has refreshing properties, and that is the Holy Spirit. And and, and that is why he tells us, instead of being drunk with wine, we will get to that also. Be ye filled with the Holy Spirit, and that is continuous. Be ye being filled with the Holy Spirit. There is a way your life is refreshed. Smith Wigglesworth was one time stopped by journalists. And because you see, Smith Wigglesworth just seemed a workaholic. If he wasn't doing a conference, he was doing door to door. If he wasn't doing door to door, he was preaching to the ones on the train. He wasn't, and then he carried the glory of God. One time he just entered a coach of a train, and people in that coach just started vibrating. And he said, people in the train were wondering, what is that? And he told them, it's because I'm here. You're being convicted. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. As in, he carried conviction like that. It will make people shake. I pray that one of these days you sit on Matato and people start vibrating and shaking. And you tell them this is the problem. And they will listen to you because they will all be wondering. They don't feel fever but they are shaking. You tell them the problem is here. I have the solution. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. Whatever is in me is agitating what is in you. Your demons. Okay, don't tell them your demons. But just tell them whatever is in me is agitating what is in you. And said, so lift your right hand, everyone. Conductor, you should you will stop collecting money. First, lift your hand also. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come. You see? Now the vibration has stopped. Now I want you to get another vibration, not out of conviction. Now you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> get uh, the Makanga reaches and no one is alighting. They all yeah. Makanga is like, You've spoiled my business and what and tell them this is my business also. It is to get people to heaven, Holy Ghost filled, and hallelujah. A very important thing. So, uh, the, so, whenever, so when Smith Wigglesworth was asked, don't you ever take a vacation? So he told the journalist, give me a break. And he spoke in tongues. Then he told them, I'm back. I'm from vacation. Yeah. And that's how he took vacation. That's how he refreshed himself. He didn't suffer depression. He didn't suffer anxiety. He didn't. Yet he never went anywhere like today's preachers want to go. Now I'm not saying it is wrong to go. Praise the Lord. But I'm showing you the Bible says bodily exercise is profitable. But profits are little. But spiritual spirituality, godliness is profitable in all things. So when you see some of these guys, they were dying in their 80s. He had never had any operation. The only operation he was going to have was uh, he had, were they gallstones, I think. So it, it was meant to be operated and removed. 
and he remembered that he had a covenant with his body that no knife should ever touch his body, no scalpel should ever touch his body because the one for Christ was broken. And he refused. And it was kidney stones actually, kidney stones. And he literally peed those stones out one by one. Painful experience peeing, but in a short time, I think some few months, few weeks, no kidney stones anymore. That is, that is how he kept healthy, by just spiritual exercise. He kept so healthy, he died in a seat laughing. The last person he talked to, they brought to him a deaf person. And he prayed for that deaf person and they were not healed. And the guys were so disappointed. So that's why he was laughing. Because he felt like, oh, these people really believe in Smith Wigglesworth. And he was laughing and he died. That's how he died. Yeah. <laughs> I was laughing at them for not believing in Jesus, for thinking that he's greater than Jesus. Like as a human being, people could be that disappointed. He was refreshed by the Holy Spirit. We can be refreshed by the Holy Spirit. That's why you see, you, you have a task, you have a task. They speak in tongues. Kenneth Hagin used to speak about speaking in tongues a minimum of one hour every day. You know, you're going to preach. Many people say, I preach, but I'm never speaking in tongues before you get there. Hey, if weed can make people bold before going on stage, you should test the height that the, ghost, the Holy Ghost gives. You will never want to test weed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, those days when I used to be nervous, that's what I used to do. Nowadays, I don't know if there is any stage I'm nervous at now. I know so much. I'm conscious. I walk with him here like, yeah, but that's what I used to do. You call to preach, I'm there, 17 year old. You look at all these people with beards. I didn't have a beard. Yeah. You know, I was even looking at the, fa- the poster. If you see the first poster we made for that, I didn't have all this, the sideburns, the beard. It has just grown in this short time here. Now I can't be scared. I have a beard. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'll just stand. So if the entrance is around here, let's welcome the preacher. Uh, I come charged, refreshed, alive. Praise the Lord. And that is why I told that is why I told you that it is very hard for me to doze in Acacia. Because I speak in tongues. Very, very hard. Even if I've not slept the whole day. Out the previous this last Kesha we had, 31st, I almost didn't sleep. What was I doing the last night? But the night before I'd slept like for two hours, then woke up early, then the whole day, then came for that Kesha. And he can refresh. He said that the same spirit, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall vitalize our mortal bodies. Isn't it amazing that he said mortal bodies? He didn't say spiritual bodies. You know, there would be a lot of debate if he had said spiritual bodies or if he had said bodies. We would say, oh, those are bodies we will receive. No, the bodies we will receive are going to be immortal. He's saying it shall quicken your mortal bodies. As in, he's that powerful. I'm not saying you should abuse your body, but there are times you need from your body more than it can take biologically. The Holy Spirit can help you. Yeah. When you go for missions, sometimes it's going to be hard to get uh, eight hours. Napoleon said it's a fool that sleeps for eight hours. Yeah, but, you know, there are very few people you're going to find really doing great things who are sleeping for eight hours. <laughs> eight hours. By the, by the time you're what, you're 80, you've slept uh, three quarters of your, a third of your life, or eh? a third of your life you've just <laughs> Because the doctor said you should, let me tell you. Yeah? You, you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger. Does he look like he's not fit? Does he look like he has healthy challenges? At 70 what? Look at how that guy, if you go to the gym, you is 20 watt with him, he will still beat you. At 70 something, he's older than your granddad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of you is older than your granddads. <laughs> yeah? And he looks fit. But you know one thing I saw, people asked him, so how much, how, how do you deal with sleep? And he said, you sleep faster. Yeah, that's the secret, yeah. Just sleep faster. Make sure you just sleep faster. Do it in five hours. Do it in, just sleep faster. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit can help you to sleep faster. (laughs) The issue is quality of sleep, not length of sleep. It is quality of sleep. Somebody sleeps for eight hours, but it is not quality. 
When the Holy Spirit, why, why does he say he gives sleep to the ones he loves? You sleep eight hours, but you're tossing, you're tossing, you're tossing, a cockroach is chasing you, a cockroach is coming, it's... Eh? Yes? Hmm? Look at, right now we are here, people are serving, and we've not eaten. The last meal I ate was yesterday, what, what time was it? So, we are here, and we are not... Uh, we don't look like we've not eaten. You get what I mean? We can carry you. We can stop looking here. Look here like we... <laughs> it's this belt that is lying to you. Have a mum full. Huh? <laughs> we are refreshed by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit will vitalize your motor body. Uh, uh, Richard Wombrand. With Richard Wombrand was in uh, what is it called? If you read the book Tortured for Christ, they were in Romania and they arrested them for being Christians under the Soviet Union and communism. And they would give them two slices of bread a week and a cup of porridge. That is all they were given to eat. And the ones that were mature Christians. Because even in prison, they still used to preach to people and win them to Christ. That's the power of the gospel that I was preaching about this morning. That the very people you're preaching to know that the reason you're in prison is because of preaching to them. But the gospel still has enough power to convict them. To add on their statement in prison. Their sentence in prison. Because if they got born again, then releasing them was almost never going to happen. Especially if they were Romanians. And so... One brand and the others who are spiritually mature would sacrifice for them, they would eat once every fortnight. They would get those slices of bread and give, they add to the ones who are new believers. And for them, they sacrifice and they eat once every fortnight. How did they survive? The Holy Ghost. Another one was called Vanya. Vanya, I think, was in the Russian army. The book is actually called Vanya. V A N Y A. Yeah? He was, they tried to kill him. In the, he was in the army and he was a believer. They put him outside in a like summer suit, you know, vest and what, during winter. Ice cold snow, they put him out there to punish him. They come in the morning and them with winter jackets, winter suits, they are shivering and they touch him and he is warm. They ran a truck over him accidentally, but it was intentional. He was lying under the truck, one of those army trucks. And they, they released what, like the handbrake, so it rolled over him, over his pelvis, like... So bones crashed, shattered, and he was taken into the infirmary. And they told him he will never walk, the spine has been shattered and what, and the doctor moved out. And the next morning the doctor found him standing on his feet. And they ran out. As in experience after experience because of the Holy Ghost in his life. Experiences on the physical body. Yeah. Later he was killed still. Like he died under that persecution. He died. His family wanted to sue the army and what. But that was communism. It was bad. You know people buying communism. People shouting supporting America about this socialism. And what you don't know what it is. I think you should talk to people who have experienced it firsthand. It never works. And we've never had anyone who came out of it and gave a good story. When they tested this other... Capitalism is not God's ideal. You get what I mean? Those are not very good things and people suffer that. But all that I was telling you about Vanya and all these people that suffered under communism. And the things that God did in their lives. The things that God helped them to. And many of us have also experienced things. We've experienced the power of God in our lives. The power of God vitalizing our mortal bodies. Him giving us life. There are many times that I've come to preach. I don't know, maybe I'm tired. I'm what, and sometimes I just feel like, let me sit in the office or what. But the moment I stand here, man, something fresh just comes over me. And... My body is my vitalized. I'm refreshed. I can go on and on and on. Hallelujah. One of the testimonies in Atom after Atomic Power Fasting was written, this one you can even Google. Cantrell, he worked on a carrier vessel, carrier ship. I think if you see, you, you, you see you, if you put Cantrell's testimony of Atomic Power Fasting, 
you'll see. He was assistant chaplain in the army and he used to be on this uh, US carrier. And I think one of the ship, one of the planes landed and hit the like fuel chambers or storage and that whole thing caught on fire. Cantrell was the last person to leave. And Cantrell, when he left, first of all, he was sleeping. So when he woke up, everyone was dead. Every metal was red hot. And he tried to touch his neighbor and flesh just fell off the bones. Dark. And you see, so by the time he's seated, all the cushion is already burnt. He's just seated on metal, red hot metal. And he stands up and him is not burnt. And he looks at the knob for the door and it is red hot. And he fears, but he has a voice telling him, pull it, and it feels cold. And he opens the door, and when he comes out, you know, like how you open the door, and you know, that fire there is gasping for oxygen. So, like, he's covered in flames. Those flames come out. And the people, you know, his chaplain, the head chaplain who had been refusing him to preach, bows there down and says you can preach all you want and he 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 comes out then he remembers he says i forgot my book inside and they're like duh people are burnt metal is burnt you think it's a book you're going to find so he goes back and this is like some hours later like two hours so the people who want to go back see they have safety boots yeah those for industrial work factory work but they get in two meters and their boots melt they come out, it's still that hot. Cantrell moves in and he finds the book on his seat and he comes out with the book. Not smelling of smoke, no nothing. Starts preaching. So those are the testimonies, some of the testimonies that came from that. Then body felt that definitely you, now you can see why such preachers were hated by many people. Many didn't want to identify with them. They call them cult and what. But there is something they talk about. They put a lot of emphasis on body felt salvation because they're like, salvation had only been emphasized on the soulish realm and nothing had been emphasized about. Like they were very tough. They are stunned. They are like, how can the body, which is the temple of Jesus, the temple of the Holy Spirit, have sickness? They could not believe. Like how? How? Like to them, no. You, you're good. You, you're able to take care of your house. It has no rats. It has no termites. So you mean the Holy Spirit house is done that they didn't believe in Christians. Falling sick, they didn't believe in that. So uh, about one of the testimonies was there are times they had missions for so long, they on the road for so long, they would switch off sweating. And so we don't want bad body odor. And when people would come around them, they would think they used a certain cologne, so fresh. And there's just a nice fragrance coming from them. And many times in their prayer meetings, that fragrance was all over in the prayer meeting. You get what I mean? Like that. They know they've run out of water. They're not going to get water. They're like, God, let's not be thirsty in three days. And they will not be thirsty in three days. Testing the powers of the age to come. Now you see when he says, these are the ones that have handled the good word and have tested of the powers of the age to come. So this is just showing you some of the experiences that the Holy Spirit can give to you. Vitalize your mortal body. Quicken your mortal body. In other words, uh, you know, even if they may not be a daily experience, you get what I mean? But you must experience some of these things. The Holy Spirit is not that small. It's not just for rabba, ba, 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 shabba, ba, rabba. You know, it's not just for that. He's for way more than that. Vitalize your mortal body. Tell that you they believe. Healing virtue flow. Once in a while, you may need that food to remain hot when your gas has run out. They would pray until the room was on heat, until neighbors would call for fire brigade. Yeah. And you see, even one of the moves of God during, I think it was at, was it at the carpenter's house or what? But in those moves, revivals by Rodden Howard when he had just gone to US, 97 and what? There is a church, still I think in Florida, where the outsiders onlookers saw fire on the church. And they called the firefighters. And firefighters came and there were eyewitnesses. This is the church. This is the church. And the firefighters went in and it was really hot, but they didn't see any fire. But it was hot. Like the firefighters are wondering, how? How can it be this hot with no fire? 
So there are times that the Holy Ghost shows there are manifestations that come physically. There is a time we were preaching in Kibera and there was fire on people's hands. And we got that even on camera. We got, you see, because at first I thought that I was the only one seeing. And then the different people, I don't remember which people are in those meetings, but I remember, I think Eli was, yeah, Eli was in that meeting. Yeah. And fire was got on people's hands, literally. Like the way these people had cloven tongues of fire. I think it's somewhere if you scroll on photos on our page, you will see such things. And many manifestations like that that have happened. This is to show us the Holy Spirit can refresh you. There is going to be that time where you need Him. Some of you are medics. During this time of Corona, you have, you know, you, you've even forgotten what shift you're on. A time comes, you, you know, they are bringing sick person after sick person. Sick, you, you know, you can't say, you're just putting off your, your suit and what, ready to go home. Say, oh, no, there's an emergency. You need to come back. Put on your stethoscope and, and run back. And, you know, you just feel like you're going to die from there. Now, that is time to rely on the Holy Ghost. You can vitalize this mortal body. At times, you're going to drive for hours. We are doing these missions. We are going to travel. These missions require... If people have substances that can help people, then the Holy Ghost can help us. And I'm not saying we abuse our body. Definitely, you'll get a time where you can do other things. But He vitalizes your mortal body. He, he can change your, your, your... I never liked watermelon. And that experience had come from... I was sick, I ate watermelon, and I puked. So every time I would smell it, it would nauseate me, like it was just so bad. So bad, and that's a common thing, like when somebody's sick. Many people don't like things because they reacted to them when they were sick. You get what I mean? Yeah, but I trusted the Holy Spirit, I'm going to eat this again because it is good. And it started smelling nice. It just started smelling nice. Now I eat watermelon. Do you get what I mean? He will vitalize your mortal body. He will work on you. I've told you my testimony of eating meat and taking milk. It would react physically, like physical reaction on my body. Meat even smelled bad. Because every time my mom would tell me, you should pray for you so that you start eating. And I would just tell her, I don't even like it. Like I don't even want to be free because it just smells bad. You get what I mean? Now it smells good. As in, if somebody starts just roasting meat outside here, I will leave you here. The preaching will stop. <laughs> you wonder where the preacher, where the preacher has gone. Hey. The preacher has just taken a break, a praise break. Especially if you can make it tender, that we can cut it with that bone. I now understand why the King James uses meat for food instead of meat, and he gave them meat. You don't know my meat. meat. Let's not talk about meat so much. I've said we've not eaten today, so if we continue talking about meat, I'll leave you here. But you see, the Holy Spirit refreshes us. That is a property of water. So if you are Christian and you're there, you're ever grumpy, you need another... You always need something to feel refreshed. You may not always have that. Imagine during this time of lockdown, I told you lockdowns came. There are no football games to watch. There are no... All the places we go to for refreshment or recreation were closed. So people get into depression and what? Now that was a very good time to rely on the Holy Spirit. People throw tantrums. People quarrel with their wives when lights are off because internet is off. You just find a house turning on fire. Because internet is off. Now we should learn to rely on the Holy Spirit. That He can give you comfort. Imagine if He gives us Holy Ghost laughter. We're just in a meeting and He just start laughing. Can't He tickle you when you're in room alone? He can. You can start laughing. You don't need to be sad. You can start laughing. You can be happy. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit brings life to people and not death. We say water is life, and, and, and it is true, like we have seen, 75% uh, of your weight is, is it 70% or 75? 70%. Yeah, 70% is water. So you can see how your life is really made up of water. And many creatures that we see, even the mass of earth, a big percentage is water. There is water everywhere. It is just, 
Somebody can go for long with water, even without food. There is a lot in water that can sustain us. You see, people go to hospital and they will put drips on them. Look at blood. The biggest uh, blood plasma is mainly water. The biggest percentage is water. It, it is so. If it is life to our bodies, if it is life to now, think about the Holy Spirit. He gives life. So imagine if that was the percentage. As we read scripture, it is interpreted by the word, by the by the Holy Ghost. As we pray, we are praying in the Holy Ghost. As if 70% of all our spiritual activities were directly involving the Holy Spirit, how much life would we have? How much life would we have? And that is what I realize as a preacher. If I want to see results, I can't just learn good homiletics. I can't just learn to speak well and what. I need to rely on the Holy Ghost. He's very key. If we are going to have church and have impact, have lives transformed, we need to rely on the Holy Ghost. We can have good lights, we can have good screens, we can have good cameras, but the testimonies that we are hearing here, they are not going to come from good lights. They are going to, somebody is not going to testify of their back being healed because we had good lights. Yeah, these lights are not chemotherapy, they are not radiotherapy. Hallelujah. It is going to take the power of the Holy Spirit. Then we'll look at fire. I think I'll, I'll finish with this. Maybe ne- I'll finish the others next time. Fire. Luke chapter 3 verse 16. He says that the one that shall come shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That is Jesus that when he was coming will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And still he was symbolizing the Holy Spirit. And Acts chapter 2 verse 3. He says they are sat upon their heads like cloven tongues of fire on each of them. And so I was telling you that this experience that we had, fire, and fire also has one of the properties of fire, is the purifying effect. Fire purifies. You want to get good gold? Take it through fire, 4,000 degrees Celsius. That's the furnace they take it through. And you see other things will float that are less dense or what, they will float. I don't know if it's the gold, no, it's the other things that float and they can easily be taken off. And you get, it has a purifying effect. And that is why when, you know, we sing and we say, fall like fire, soak like rain, he falls like fire, that there is a purifying effect of the fire of the Holy Ghost. You get born again, you feel with the Holy Ghost, He touches you, just wake up feeling there is a purity that you feel that you have. Praise the Lord. Not purity that girl you've been eyeing. Just purity given by by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. (laughs) You can have that one also. You can have both. There is no problem with having both. Purity that girl and that. You know? I say, just send me this, especially for Valentine's. Eh? And somebody was asked, who do you want to meet when you get to heaven? And he said, Faith. Who is Faith? Abraham's daughter. Abraham was the father of Faith. You know? <laughs> was he the father of Faith? Yes. <laughs> fire gives light and fire gives warmth. The Holy Spirit purifies us if we allow him to. So you spend a lot of time engaging with the Holy Spirit. You spend a lot of time. And that is why he says that building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. As you pray, you're building yourself. You're building your spiritual muscle. You're building that the Holy Ghost touches you. And you know, that is one of the things that you feel. You're like, people say, you know, there are many, especially sensationists. They, they say, oh, the Kundalini spirit. They say this speaking in tongues is what gibberish it's. It, you know, they, 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 they criticize whatever they say. They, they say these things are made up. Speaking in tongues is made up. These manifestations are made up. People laughing hysterically is of the devil. You know, there are many things they criticize about all this move of God, the power of God that we experience. But you see, this is it. The testimony is in the fruit. When this person laughed hysterically on that ground, they cried, they spoke in those tongues. Watch their life. Watch them after two months. Why is it that they have a joy that cannot be quenched? Why is it that they have a self-worth that they did not have? They're not as inferior as they used to be. Because you would think this would embarrass them. It is going to make them more. But you realize that they are a different person. 
There is a sense of what? There is a, that the Holy Ghost touched you and you're there and you're ba 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 ba. You're even wondering, what, what, what am I saying? Doesn't it sound awful? Doesn't it? But you know, you get up and you just feel more pure. You feel like, actually, I'm sure my sins were forgiven. You feel like, actually, I'm not meant to walk a certain way of life. There are things I'm not meant to mix with. Why do you feel that sense of consecration? That is the fruit. That is what the Holy Spirit does. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because he is symbolized using fire. And fire does this. And fire also gives light. When they were walking in the wilderness at night, they had a pillar of fire. And that is what used to lead them. It gives them warmth and it gives them light. Now the Holy Spirit, he guides us. He leads us. I gave you a testimony. I think last week I was just giving you a testimony of when I was driving and there is traffic and my wife is off. I was off the car and we were meant to meet somewhere. Then my phone died. And the Holy Spirit led me directly to where she was and led her also. We met with no phone, with no communication. Another time I left here, I was going to, to Uganda. Got at the airport, landed and my phone died just at the airport. My battery died at the airport. And I was using public means up to get to Kampala and meet my brother. I, I was going to go where they stay. I don't know where they stay. They, they had moved, like during, before I'd gone, they had moved, changed location. So he had come to pick me. So now I have no phone. I don't have his number off head. I don't know who I can tell to help me call. You get what I mean? And as I got into Kampala, and this is, rec this is, this is uh, recent, I got there. The Holy Spirit told me, walk like this. And it was at night. It was around 8 p.m. Walk like this. And I walked and stood directly in front of my brother. He was seated at a certain pavement, seated, and it is dark, there is even no light, and I just stood directly. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit, He's a light, even in darkness. You get what I mean? So there are many uncertainties that you may have, but the Holy Spirit, remember, uh, there is a testimony from George, there is a time, I think I gave a word of knowledge about somebody doing engineering, yeah? I have this word of knowledge of there is something that you're working on, an equipment that is not working, yeah? I don't remember the whole story, yeah? At work. I don't remember. George will tell us the whole story. George has many testimonies. Of, George, you come and, come and tell us some of these testimonies. Actually, he has... It is so long since George spoke to us, yeah? Yeah, so sometime in 2019, my boss gave me a very uh, hard uh, uh, work to do. Uh, well, so uh, uh, him is an engineer from the US, so they learned very hard things and very complex. And I trained, I trained here at Kenyapoli, very basic training. So You're despising Kenyapoli? <laughs> yeah, so we were like in two like different worlds. So he called me and gave me a very hard task, like to like just make something new from like scratch. So I designed some circuit boards, I fixed wires, they are just burning, I connect them, I turn on, they are burning. I'm just feeling less it's Then now you, you see, you can imagine how safe you feel flying on aeroplanes, because they work on aeroplanes. <laughs> they also fix boards that burn. <laughs> Doesn't that make you feel safe when you're up there in the air? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I, I felt very much insufficient and frustrated. So that was a thing on a Friday. I, I, I came and met Pastor in a meeting of our partners. And uh, we prayed. I was just slow like the whole time. I, I was feeling horrible as a failure. And as Pastor uh, was speaking, he said that I have a word for someone here who, who thinks they are failing at work, they feel less. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, what is seeing me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the soil. I felt seen and known. And I went back on Monday and uh, somehow like I fixed the thing and, uh, and it worked. Yeah. Yeah. 
So then another time on a Thursday, I came to service and pastor gave me a word. He said I'll travel uh, to countries as the main person. And I was like, okay, I, I, I received it, but I, I thought maybe it would be like after many years. Then literally 12 hours later, so, so, so that was on a Thursday service at around 8 p.m. Then on Friday morning, I go to office and my boss asked me for a passport. I'm like, that was fast, <laughs> like 12 hours later. Yeah, and, and in a few weeks, I, yeah, I, I, I traveled outside. Yeah, yeah, so I, I felt uh, seen by God and known. Yeah. Amen. You are known. Amen. Isn't that amazing? That is what the Holy Spirit does. Now, many times the Holy Spirit, imagine he's uh, like, he's like sad. His hands are tied. Or his hands are at rest. No one gives him work. We want to battle things on our own. Then later we go to him. And when I've been seeing it, I've been thinking about even some of the things that have been disturbing us here with screens and what. I'm like, how long did we take to really inquire of the Holy Spirit? As we spend money, as we do what? How much time? Why? It's because we don't think he can help us fix these things. But he's literally fixed things. He's literally given us solutions. Phones have been repaired in our house by the Holy Spirit. Laid hands on. My wife has laid hands on, I don't know how many phones that have worked. You get what I mean? He is real. Real solutions for life. Real solutions. He will guide you. So like a fire, the Egyptian, the Israelites didn't need to move in darkness. You see, during their time, they didn't have Mulika Mwizi, those big lights. They're, I don't think they are here, but I saw a big one in Kibera. A big, they beam. Oh, I see one very far there. You see, those lights that have red and white on red and white poles. You know, they, so when the children of Israel were moving, they didn't have those ones. They, there were no, there was no traffic lights during their time. They are walking in the wilderness. How would they move at night? The Holy Spirit. There was a pillar of fire that would guide them. And imagine even walking at night. And these guys were lazy. Even at night, God made sure there is light so that they walk at night. You would think they would reach in three days. It still took 40 years. <laughs> walking day and night, and they still took 40 years. That's what disobedience does. So the Holy Spirit gives that. Then he says, warmth, fire is also for warmth. During the first camp, we had an experience. Many of you remember Maggie, Maggie Magdalene. She was one of the people that was caught up in heaven, had this vision. And she went out for a long time. I think she passed out for the longest. I don't remember. Two hours or what, I don't remember. But out, literally. You could, not, you could lift her hand and she was not there. All we could tell is that she was breathing. But she was not there. And she became very cold like somebody dead. Very cold. Very, very cold like. And when she came back, she's like, what her emphasis was, will you preach the gospel? People out there in the world are cold. People without Jesus are cold. She's like, I literally felt like God made her test the cold that they face outside there in the world. And it is true. They may be sweating, but there is a cold that they are going through. And there is a warmth that the Holy Spirit gives to us. There is a warmth. I've seen people who just seem so cold, fearful about everything, anxious about everything. And they came and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They began speaking in tongues and they just became a different person. Their life changed altogether. So at times it is that we feel like the world is a very cold place, so tough on us. You go into a new workplace and they are cold towards you and everything. You have the Holy Ghost. You can rely on him. You can take that lunch break to just spend time with him. That is why uh, Dr. Yongicho wrote a book and called it uh, The Holy Ghost, uh, My Senior Partner. Yeah, Is it My Senior Partner? Something like that. Yeah, My Senior Partner. Who said he realized the Holy Spirit. And you see why we are saying he's not fire, he's not a wind, he's not, he's a person. He symbolized using these things, but we can relate to him as a person. We can relate with him. He can be like that 
partner. He can be your business partner. He can be your partner in ministry. Many things that you may not know, many things you may not be told, he will teach you. There are things you will learn from him. There are tasks that no one around the world will know, no one will give you. We read about people like Michael Faraday. I know George who is in physics and all other people who, are, who remember a bit of physics. You remember Michael Faraday. Or you remember a parameter called Faraday's, yeah? We measure, what do we measure in Faraday's? What are Faraday's? Faraday's are for what? I don't remember. Michael Faraday, Michael, you see many of these guys who are, we learn from them as if they were scholars. Whatever we are studying at university, then they didn't study at university. They invented for us. Da Vinci didn't go to university to learn all the, at all the things that he had. But you realize that some of these guys, if you study, many times when we study about them in history and what, the Holy Spirit aspect of their lives is not normally mentioned. But my dad had a book when we were very young. We had a book about Michael Faraday, just his life. And see how the Holy Spirit literally taught him things. Many things we do about the solenoid, what, the getting electricity from the magnet and, and, and all that. Like many things that the Holy Spirit literally taught him. And his desire was to bring what? Light or what to people, like as a solution. And the Holy Spirit taught him things. And today we go and we study those things. Isaac Newton, very given to God, very given to the Holy Spirit, led. And that is why some people thought that they had taken leave of their mind. They thought these are people who used to hallucinate. Some of the discoveries that they had were not believed. Because see, they would be caught up in trances. They're in a trance and they come out of a trance and they say this. And people would argue. People would say, no, it can't work that way. You're becoming mad. They were not becoming mad. Thomas Edson, he said, would meditate on the word of God and meditate with golf balls in his hands. And he would get to a time where he gets in a trance. And you see, as he gets in a trance, he's going like he's between, like almost between asleep and awake, the golf ball would drop. And he would wake up and write whatever he has seen in that moment. And there are great inventions today, great discoveries today. Holy Ghost. So many things, we see many things and uh, uh, some of the things we are we are using today. We just look at them from the physics aspect. We don't look at the where they came from. So in invention, in whatever we are doing, the Holy Spirit can help us. Parenting, the Holy Spirit can speak to you about your baby, about your word. I've seen my wife many times in baking, how the Holy Spirit would speak to her. Many times about baking. How the Holy Spirit would speak to her. And we see many things happening, very good things happening. Because the Holy Spirit has spoken. And I've also seen many times when we don't follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, how it can be fatal. They're like, I wish we had obeyed. We both had him tell us this. Then maybe we lost money, we, we were late, we lost something, and the Holy Spirit said something. The Holy Spirit said, use this route. And you're like, eh, I know that route. I always fear that route. But you know, we just train ourselves to simply obey him. There are things that he's going to speak to you. And you're going to be so amazed. You're going to be so amazed at how he leads your life. He can lead you from any pit. The Holy Spirit can give you therapy. He can give you little... Why is he called a counselor? And we've had testimonies like this. Oh, people are not even very spiritual. There is a testimony of... I don't remember the gentleman's name, but he's an artist here in Kenya. He does poetry and all, and all that. He was on... What is that safari comb thing called? Engage. It's called Engage. Yeah, so he was on that. He's, I don't remember his name, but he has dreadlocks. So he was diagnosed with depression. And they started giving him medication. and So he shares there. I don't know how radical he is. We should meet him one day. We should invite him here to come and share his testimony. So he said he realized all the medication was just making him docile and, you know. And he started believing the word of God. He said he started meditating. And believing what does God say about me? So he would wake up in the morning to jog. And as he goes to jog, he meditates on those scriptures and what? And literally through scriptures, the Holy Spirit took him out of that situation. And he's back doing his art. The Holy Spirit walked him through that entire situation. How do you think people like Joseph survived? But you know, look at what he went through. A 17-year-old thrown in a pit, sold by your own brothers. Then your brothers come looking for food. What would you do to them? gave Joseph counseling? They just took him to prison. It seemed like everything in his life was not working. 
If Joseph was around there, he would say, Pastor, I have a curse. I want you to break a curse. I was young. I had these dreams. I was thrown in a curse. As if that was not enough, I was sold to Egyptians. As if that was not enough, I was taken to Potiphar's house and uh, things had started working out. I was accused falsely and I was thrown into prison. I have near success syndrome. Uh, you know, yeah. That is one of the things you learn when you're in school, Africa School of Prayer, when you're learning about intercession, praying at midnight. There's something called near success syndrome. Something just seems to be working out, then pff, you're nearly succeeding. And, yeah, so that's what it is called. I told you I prayed these prayers. Okay. That one I heard from here. That there's a spirit called leaking pockets. Yeah. You just don't know where your money goes. So Joseph would have come for deliverance. As in everyone would have told him, hey, your life, no, you, you can't, you're born, your dad buys you a beautiful coat, and your brothers hate you. And as if in a pit is not enough, they sell you to another country. Even in another country, you're failing. You're accused falsely. So who counseled Joseph through all that? To be mature enough to take on the pressure of not just an entire nation, but the entire world at the age of 30. Many of us are 37 and we can't take on the pressure of a relationship. This is an entire world. Married man. Yeah? That was a lot of pressure to take on. Yeah? I've seen people here who can't lead a hotspot. A hotspot is breaking them. That's what? Six people and what? And they feel, Pastor, I can't do this anymore. Now imagine a whole world. He's interpreting dreams for people who are forgetting him. He thinks that dream is going to help him. How did he have his acts together? How didn't he fall apart? You think you've seen trouble? He had no phone call. He had no internet to be communicating back home. And yet when his brothers come and meet him, he's sane, he's sober. No anger, no bitterness towards them. And he's not in denial. He's sane. He's, he's very okay. That takes the Holy Ghost. He is a counselor. He can help us through all our psychological issues. He can. He's so real and that is his desire. Praise the Lord. The same thing we see about people like Paul, people like Timothy. They went through a lot. Jesus, think about Jesus. You know how many therapists Jesus would have seen? Yeah? Your own family doesn't believe you. Actually, he would not have gone to the therapist himself. They would have taken him because of the things he was speaking. They would have just one time just rounded him up and put him in chains and they're like, no, we are taking you to Madari. I say, you're telling us you destroy the temple, you rebuild it. <laughs> like, what is this guy saying? Hmm? He's, he's, what do you say in Swahili? Mwenda? Hey, he's, he's Mwenda Wazim. I say, Jesus, you're Mwenda Wazim. Because the Pharisees saw it and they said, hey, this guy, he speaks by the spirit of Bill Zebab. What kept these guys together? It was the Holy Spirit. They had a real relationship with the Holy Spirit. Very important. So, as we pray for revival, we want the move of God. It is you that God is going to use. But God wants you healthy. He wants you together. And that is just going to be by us relying on the Holy Spirit. Let's not look at him as something. He is a person. He carries power. He said you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He comes with power, but he's a person. So when he comes, we receive power. We receive power from him. And you will have power. Have power. You will demonstrate power. I'm sure we are going to see some of the greatest manifestations that we are seeing. Signs and wonders. You know, you are seeing healing, you are seeing miracles, but we are going to see signs and wonders. I'm so excited about Kisumu. I don't know what we are going to see in Kisumu, but I'm believing we are going to see some literal signs and wonder things that you know things that make you say wow those are wonders you get what i mean yeah lame people being healed that's healing that's a miracle but wonders and you see something and you're like how did that happen that was telling you when you see those doors getting shut by the power of the holy ghost you know those are wonders they leave the people feeling like wow yeah that's a wonder it leaves people wow when you see some people carried by the power of the Holy Ghost and suspended in the air for about two minutes, that is a wonder. You know what I mean? Literally. When you see somebody who has never jumped, they, 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 they've never jumped in their life, but you see them jump from there and fall here. Remember, you know, like now going to Moranga, this lady doesn't speak 
English she doesn't speak Swahili. She only speaks Kikuyu. And she said prophet saying in English. And you see none of us got that on camera. I think it, it's an audio that people got. I don't even know where the audio was put. You see why we should pull out your phones. Let's show the world that God is still working. Pull out your phones when things start happening. Just let it roll in. Let, let's anticipate. Let's be ready. Anytime something can happen. So you just make sure we're not missing anything. And because sometimes I look and I'm like, what? I wish we had been recording everything that we've seen since we started ministry. Some of the things are even unbelievable to tell people. You get what I mean? I told you of the time when money fell, and I'm like, I wish we had a camera. When we were praying and it rained on us for over three hours, and none of our phones got soaked in water. And we are fully soaked, dripping. All of us, around 15 of us, we pull out those phones and none of them is soaked in water, none of them is spoiled. Such awesome experiences. Like why we should get such experiences? We should get such experiences. When we were praying for this lady with my wife, he on the street was blind in one eye. And seeing that milky wart, that layer on the eye, seeing it move and asking her, do you, do you feel it? Yes, I feel it. It's moving. It's moving. And we saw it move and it is moving up and she can see more light. I'm like, we should have pulled out our phone and not been too spiritual to miss a moment. You know, sometimes it's going to be a... No! Nah. This is that why, you know, preachers would say, hey, there's a lame guy. Close your eyes. I'm like, I'm closing one. I want to see that leg straighten out. I remember the very first lame person I prayed for. I closed my eyes. Then the guy jumped and so I didn't even see it happening. I'm like, I'm never going to make that mistake again. <laughs> no, I'm going to look. I want to see it. If I can record, let me record it. And I'll show, uh, I'll show Ada and, 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 and her children. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm like, you see, this is what God did. This is what, imagine the things we read about GC, more the things we read about, all those things that are just documented by writing. Imagine if we had videos of those things. Imagine the things now we see of A.A. Allen that were videotaped, and yet they, they make us feel like, what? This was happening, and yet the majority were never recorded. So imagine if all those things were recorded. And there are preachers who have done that. There are preachers, I like these. There are preachers, I know, like two preachers that God told from when they were starting. Buy a camera. That was the first thing. Buy a camera. Let it roll. And some of these things have never been aired, but once in a while, they come up. A footage that comes up and you're like, wow. These are things that God was doing literally. Literally. Yeah? A service where it was raining on one lady. I don't remember the preacher. But there's a lady, she had cancer, she was in a wheelchair. It just started raining in the service. It was raining on her. And the ceiling was dry. But between the ceiling and her, rain just started pouring. They moved the wheelchair to another section. And it rain follows her. And it's raining. It is making that place wet where she is. They are mopping and mopping. And it's raining and raining. And she got up and she was healed of stage 4 cancer. She could walk. She came out of her wheelchair. Such things are good to, to just be. Because that's what they did, you know. Somebody asked sometimes, why do you have people on camera in the service? Yeah? How, uh, for them, how do they worship? Are they not worshiping God? You idiot. That's how you even know that we're on Facebook. How would you know us? How would you follow our services? You know, they sit there and watch and they can't remember that there's somebody helping them to watch. It is for people like you. That they are not worshipping. <laughs> now, if we are reading Acts. Do you see how Luke reports? Then we moved. Then we. Isn't it a blessing that Luke recorded? You know, think, wasn't he praying with Paul? Wasn't he? But he was there recording. He recorded the things. So if during their time, if Jesus had had cameras, if they were there, Luke would have a camera would be recording those things. They are for our learning. They inspire us. We record them. And these people you see on camera, these are spiritually mature people. You whiz at home, you can't even lift your leg to come to, come to church and you're complaining about people being on camera. You come, they will lay hands on you and you will also want to serve where they are serving. Yeah? They are sacrificing for you. Hmm? As you sip tea in your bed. And give it. And turn us off because a football match has begun. You will wear. And we can, we can see you. <laughs> you better behave yourself. 
You better behave yourself. You think secret service people are not serving? Hmm? Why is it that when, 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 when they are singing the national anthem, the secret service people don't, they don't stop and salute? Ever seen in the present there, they are saying that all the other armed guys are, and these guys are still, for them they move. Huh? You think they are not honoring the country? They are. That president is a big symbol of the country, and they are looking out for him. The enemy is not going to respect that you are singing the anthem. <laughs> That's actually a great opportunity to strike. And so as we are having service, these people on cameras have experienced. They didn't join church and write a start serving on camera. They've experienced what God does. So they are the missionaries behind the camera. We've had testimonies from even beyond this country. People filled with the Holy Ghost because somebody stood on that camera. And there is somebody in another country who was blessed, who was healed. A word of knowledge was given here and somebody was healed. Why? Because there is a missionary on the camera taking me where I have not gone. That is missionary work. Hallelujah. Real missionary work. Father, thank you for everyone that came today. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for whatever you're doing in our lives. Thank you for the lives that you're transforming. Thank you for your anointing. The mantle that has fallen on your people. Thank you, Father, that from today the work of the Holy Spirit shall be so evident in every life, in every individual. So evident, so evident that we will rely on you. We will fall in love. That the Holy Spirit will not just be a story or some power, some fire. That he will be a person that we talk to we hear from, we relate with, and we will see the wonderful things that you do. Thank you, Father. I give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you blessed? Are you glad you came? God bless you so much.